first of all, I wish to thank you all for uh, watching my presentation. I will present our work, which is the position sensitive gem based neutron detector prototype. So let's go. Okay, so we can start asking uh, why neutrons and neutron science is a growing field. So in the last decades, we had a lot of advance, advances and we were able to use neutrons to study matter, for instance. And uh, with, uh, along the time, we were able to study more and more complex materials. And to study these materials, we, we needed uh, more and more precision. So we need the uh, development uh, regarding the detectors. Uh, classically, the most used, uh, most common gas used for detecting neutrons uh, is helium-3. And it's helium-3 because helium-3 has uh, several uh, advantages, such as uh, high neutron capture cross-section. It has low uh, gamma ray sensitivity, which is nice also, uh, because you, you want to avoid the, the background uh, radiation. And these detectors are normally uh, usually easy to build. They are stable under several conditions and they do not degrade for uh, long periods of time. This is uh, the most common one, uh, the field proportional counters, the tube detectors. And the helium, helium tree is obtained from tritium decay. So our main suppliers are United States and Russia. Nowadays, we live what is called uh, the helium tree shortage or the helium tree crisis, which consists in a high, high demand of helium tree, but a smaller supply. So as we have the, a smaller supply of helium tree, we can say that we have no more helium tree available to several applications. So it's interesting to search for alternatives. Uh, here I show some uh, different materials uh, commonly used in, in neutron applications. Um, and I, I show here the neutron capture cross-section of these materials uh, in function of the neutron energy. We wish to work uh, with thermal neutrons. Uh, so after the helium-3 here, it's interesting the boron-10. Uh, and that's the, the converser that we used in, in our project. Uh, so the boron-10 captures the neutron and it decays into lithium and alpha particles. And we can detect the ionization of these products. So we, we are building a gaseous detector and we use the gem structure. Uh, as Thiago already said, uh, the gas electron multiplier is a very uh, well-known uh, micro pattern used nowadays. It has some advantages uh, compared, for instance, to the classic uh, multi-wire proportional detectors, such as small, smaller ion backflow, good cost benefit, benefit ratio, it support uh, high event rates and it has better energy and position resolution. So it's a nice uh, structure uh, to, to use. Uh, here is the working, working principle of the gem as Tiago already showed us. Uh, we apply a difference of electropotential between the two copper layers here. It generates this kind of field, this red field, and it uh, it enables us to 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 allow uh, electronic multiplication inside these holes. Uh, here we have some one simulation, Garfield simulation of uh, multiplication. We we have here this track. This one white track is one electron, and it's multiplicated. Uh, inside the hole. In yellow, we have the tracks of the ions, the, uh, the ions pr uh, produced by this multiplication. And here we have the result. Our detector, in our detector, we use uh, two microstructures, uh, two gems, 
with different pitch sizes. So the large pitch one has uh, 280 micrometers between never two holes, and the standard one has 140 micrometers between ever ever two holes. We use a deposition uh, at the cathode of our detector. A, it's a boron 10 carbide deposition, 2.2 micrometer thickness. Uh, this deposition was kindly provided by the European Spallation Source. Uh, they 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 have oh sorry they have the know-how uh, uh, doing this uh, deposition. We uh, our detector works under open flow uh, using argon CO2, a mixture, 9% and 10%, 90% of argon, 10% of CO2, and we collect this the signal here uh, in the this readout I will talk about. So this is a strip readout. It was uh, it was made in CERN. And it has 256 by 256 uh, strips. And these strips are disposed in different planes. So the charge uh, can be divided in, into in these two directions, X and Y. And we use these resistive chains to divide the signal. And collecting the four uh, signals here, we can uh, reconstruct the the position, the initial uh, position uh, where the, the charge uh, hit the redoubt. We tested our detector in the IEA I1 uh, research reactor at the 10, our neighbor. Um, and we we have this, uh, in the 10, we have this thermal neutron beam, which is produ produced by uh, a monochromator. It's the same beam used in the Aurora diffractometer. And it was calibrated, so it has uh, 41.8 milli milliatom volts of energy. And this flux here, 6 times 10 to the power of 4 neutrons per uh, centimeter square per second. So uh, we made some uh, self-made masks, uh, cadmium masks, because cadmium absorbs the neutron, so we can test uh, with this different size holes. We can test the position sensitivity of our detector. Here is a picture of one of these masks. And we used a, a table scanner to, uh, to uh, provide a calibration of these holes, because they were Handmade. Here we can uh, we can see also some counts at the top and at the bottom of this image. Uh, this is because the 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 beam is larger than the mask, but okay, it's not a big problem. We can use a support mask here. This is another mask we use it. You can see this region here and uh, the profile of the beam. Uh, and we try different shapes and, and uh, disposals of these holes. And with these different disposals, here we have uh, half millimeter holes. And in these lines, we have these half millimeter holes with different steps between each other. So here we have a four millimeter step, a three millimeter step, and so on. And if we plot the X profile of the steps here, we can see that at some point we can we are not uh, we cannot distinguish anymore between the the holes. So it gives us an uh, a an idea of, of uh, about the spatial resolution of our detector. Uh, Lucas, sure. Mm -hmm. Please speak toward the, uh, the mic. Your voice is going back and forth. It's vanishing. Point. Sorry, sorry. Uh, so here we can have a, a, an idea about the resolution, uh, spatial resolution of our detector. Uh, this mask we used for uh, to the calibration of uh, position calibration of uh, our detector. So uh, we can plot here the uh, in the white the white region we can plot the 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 y profile and the X profile of the black region here. 
and we know the positions because of the the calibration of the mask and knowing the real positions of these uh, holes and the, uh, their position in in beam, beam coordinates we can uh, take the we can get the calibration equations and we are able then to calibrate uh, the position of uh, this image uh, another study that we are we are doing is regarding the uh, estimative estimative to uh, the re uh, position resolution spatial resolution of our detector so we can do this by uh, for each one of these holes uh, we can plot the the profile the x and y profile of the of the the image and we can fit uh, gaussian peaks here and this gaussian peak uh, peaks present uh, this this full width at half maximum and we expect that uh, for a point hole the full width uh, at half maximum will be equal to the resolution of uh, our detector so here we have some uh, uh, experimental results and we see that uh, our resolution should be uh, better than uh, three millimeters for uh, a point like uh, hole. We were also uh, we could also compare the uh, the energy spectrum of the products of the of the neutron capture of the capture reaction. Uh, we could uh, we could uh, compare this to a simulation giant for simulation. And it enables us to uh, to perform a pre-calibration using the, the simulation. So we we see that the spectrum is, the spectrums are very similar to each other. The, the in red we we have the experimental one, and in black this simulated one. We could also uh, evaluate the uh, measure the efficiency of our detector. So we, uh, our group uh, uh, made this uh, simulation here using Gen4, and it was expected uh, the maximum efficiency uh, of our detector about 3.16 percent, and we obtained a 2.97% of experimental efficiency. So it's uh, equivalent. We have an uh, equivalent uh, efficiency for our detector. The next steps, uh, we wish to, to increase the detection efficiency and we can, we can do this by adding some tick gems in this detector. Tick gems are essentially uh, the same thing as gems, uh, but we use, instead of Capton, we use a PCB board here. And we, we, if we use these tick gems with uh, uh, boron carbide coatings, uh, they, are, uh, they are able to, to capture neutrons as well. And we can then uh, collect this charge and multiply them here. So the uh, the next steps involve uh, we want to use the stick gems to to allow uh, ha have more uh, use more uh, deposition layers and therefore uh, obtain higher efficiency. Um, so that's it. Uh, thank you all. Uh, I, I wish also to thank you CNPQ and the European Spallation Source. Uh, I wish to thank you also the, uh, the organizing committee of the, the Reunion de Trabalho. And thank you all. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Luca. About the post question in the chat, but please uh, feel free to ask uh, live now. If you have uh, no uh, question to Lucas, it's a bit uh, 
out of protocol, but uh, I have a question to Guglielmi mm -hmm. Zan, do you pay? Yesterday he presented a very nice uh, talk about uh, possibility at uh, APEN. So I have a question. What do you expect from uh, such a work by, by Lucas for, uh, for your activity? What do I expect? Um, well, I want to, to build uh, this detector can, can be used in different applications, such as uh, uh, being monitoring and beam profile and even uh, radiation monitors. So I expect to, in the future, be able to, to work with a higher efficiency so we can uh, uh, get a, a better efficiency and it's uh, more comparable to the, <laughs> the helium de detectors. And I wish also to improve the position sense, uh, uh, sensitivity of this detector. So uh, it has uh, several uh, different applications. We can use this for diffractometry and neutron uh, diffract, uh, diffraction and uh, different studies. It's very interesting. I didn't get if Tiago has a question. Yeah, as I have a question uh, myself. Okay. Um, a very quick question. You, you mentioned the, the helium-3 is less sensitive to gamma. And uh, uh, how would you expect gamma affect your, your measurements? Yeah, if I, if I use here, uh, so in this detector, if we use uh, here, so we have this uh, drifted region here. If we use uh, this drift region uh, too too big, so if we use like this 10 millimeter uh, thickness on this K region here, we start to to capturing uh, to look gammas. We start to capturing gammas in our in our detector. So. Uh, Using we are now using two millimeters, which is already a very good, uh, very good uh, drift region because it almost uh, uh, it almost uh, it it has a very small uh, sensi sensitivity to gamma. So well, smaller the drift uh, the drift region, is smaller the sensitivity to gamma, because it will depend on the on the size of this region and, and of the energy of the background gammas. So there is a constraint that we have in, in the operation of this detector. So to avoid it, we, we need to, to, to have this drift region very, uh, very small, very narrow. Thank you. So thank you all. If you had oh, any uh, questions, um, any other question? Okay. Si non tema is questioning. If there are no more question, let's. Uh, <clears throat> Thanks uh, 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 again, uh, uh, Lucas.